These are practice exercises from page 90, 91, and 92 of the textbook, dealing with some stoichiometric conversions between grams, moles, and atoms. So taking a look at the first problem here, they are giving us grams, and they're asking us to convert into moles. Again, before we start any problem, before we put any numbers down, before we do any calculations, we want to have a plan. We know the plan is to convert between grams and moles. Question is, what piece of information do we need to convert between grams and moles? And what we need is the molar mass or the molecular weight. Why do we need the molecular weight? We need the molecular weight because it is in units of grams per mole, so we can use it as a conversion factor. So that's the first thing we are going to calculate. We are going to determine the molecular weight of this sodium bicarbonate. We've already practiced calculating the molecular weight, and you need your periodic table to do that. So the molecular weight, remember that we're going to round everything to one decimal place of sodium bicarbonate. We're going to need the mass of the sodium atom, which is 23.0. We're going to need the mass of hydrogen, which is 1.0. We're going to need the mass of carbon, which is 12.0. And we're going to need the mass of 3 oxygen. So we add that all together. Our answer is going to be at one decimal place here. And we are looking at 84.0 grams per mole as the molecular weight or molar mass of sodium bicarbonate. So when we set up our calculation, we're going to start with the number they give us, the 508 grams. We're going to set up our conversion factor so that grams cancels and we end up in units of moles. So if we look at the information we know from the molar mass, we know that there are 84 grams in every mole. So that number 84 is actually going to go on the bottom of this conversion factor because for every one mole of sodium bicarbonate, it weighs 84 grams. If you look at what's happening with our units here, we are going to cancel out the units of grams. We are going to be left with units of moles, which is what we want. Looking at significant figures, we only get three significant figures here. So when we do this calculation, it's going to end up being 6.8. 0 0.5 moles of sodium bicarbonate. Make sure when you're doing all these calculations, you're showing your work, you're labeling everything with correct units, and you're explaining why you're setting up conversion factors in the ways that you are. Okay, taking a look at the next set of problems. This time, we are starting in moles, and they're asking us to end in grams. So we're just going backwards from moles into grams, and we can still use the molecular weight or the molar mass to do this. Since we're using the same compound, that's sodium bicarbonate, we don't have to do the molar mass calculation again. We can just start with our final calculation. So 6.33 moles of sodium bicarbonate. Again, we want the units of moles to cancel out. We want grams, so notice that this conversion factor is opposite. That makes sense because we're going in the opposite direction. Filling in the numbers, we know that, that there are 84 grams in every mole of sodium bicarbonate. This makes sense. Our moles will cancel, leaving us with units of grams. And if you do this calculation, watching your significant figures, of three significant figures in our answer, we're going to end up with a final answer of 532 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Okay, taking a look at the next one in this set, we're still going in the same direction. We're still converting from moles into grams. 
In this case, they don't give us the formula, so we don't know the molar mass yet, so we're going to need to find that out. So sulfuric acid has the formula H2SO4. When we find the molecular weight of that, we're going to add together the mass of two hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. Again, going to one decimal place will give us 98.1 grams per mole. There are a few other videos practicing doing that calculation, so make sure you're comfortable figuring the molar mass of substances, since we do use these in our stoichiometric conversions. So time to do our math. We're going to start with the 3.0 times 10 to the negative 5 moles of sulfuric acid. We want the moles of sulfuric acid to cancel out because we want grams. We know that there are 98.1 grams in every mole. Our units are going to cancel appropriately. So we can go ahead and put this in our calculator. Again, please make sure you are comfortable entering exponents, that you're getting the correct answer. Round that to two significant figures, and you should have 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of sulfuric acid. Again, every time you do these calculations, make sure you're showing all of your work, showing all of your units, and explaining how you knew to use the conversion factor in that way. Okay, let's take a look at our last set here. So again, before I do any math, I want to think about how I'm going to perform these conversions. So I am starting in grams, and they're asking about molecules. Now this conversion is going to be a little bit more difficult. The only thing we know how to change grams into is moles using the molecular weight. But they don't want us in moles, they want us in molecules. So we're going to have to do one more step of moles to molecules. In order to convert from moles to molecules, we need Avogadro's number, and we've used that before, that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So you can see here we're going to need to do two steps in this conversion. We're going to need two different conversion factors. We also need to calculate the molar mass because we need the molecular weight to convert between grams and moles. So again, using your periodic table, you should be able to figure out the mass of one hydrogen plus one nitrogen plus three oxygens will give us 63.0 grams per mole. So setting up this calculation, we're going to start with the 4.20 grams of HNO3. And we said our first step is going to be to convert the grams into moles. We know that for every one mole, there are 63 grams. But we know we need to do two conversion factors. The next one is going to get rid of the moles and turn it into what we want, which is molecules. Again, we need Avogadro's number for this. So the question is, are there a lot of molecules inside a mole or a lot of moles inside a molecule? The answer is that there are a lot of molecules, specifically 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules inside one mole. So if we watch our units here, first thing, getting rid of grams, turning it into moles, then getting rid of moles, changing it into molecules, and since that's the correct units for our final answer, we are ready to plug this into our calculator. Again, make sure you're comfortable with all of these exponents. When you're done, round it to three significant figures, and you should have a final answer of 4.01 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of nitric acid. The next question, we're going to look at how many atoms of oxygen are in this sample. So we can start this out in a very similar way. We can still change grams into moles, 
And then we want to break it down. Instead of thinking about entire molecules, we want to think about just the oxygen atoms. So before I start doing any calculations, I want to think about my game plan. I'm going to go from grams of the acid into moles of the acid. Then I want to think about just moles of oxygen and then I want to figure out how many atoms of oxygen. So we can see in this case it's going to take us three conversion factors instead of just the two we were using before. So this is going to get set up in a very similar way. We're going to start with our 4.20 grams of the nitric acid. We're going to convert the grams into moles. And here's where we're going to change a little bit inside every mole of the nitric acid. We just care about how many moles of oxygen because we don't want to know the whole molecule, we just want to know about oxygen atoms. So we've done something similar to this before and if you look at the formula, inside every one mole of HNO3 there are three moles of oxygen. So that's our conversion factor there. The last thing we want to do is change the moles of oxygen into atoms. And again we know Avogadro's number is used for that. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd in every mole. Again, watching our units, the grams of the acid cancel, the moles of the acid cancel, the moles of oxygen cancel, leaving us with atoms. So a little bit more to put in your calculator here. Again, please make sure you're practicing and round that to three significant figures. So you should have a final answer of 1.20 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. So I'll circle that so we know that just that answer is 1.20 atoms of oxygen. Again, every time you set up one of these problems, make sure you're thinking through the steps before you do any calculations. This is the most important thing you can do to get ready to do stoichiometry, and this is what I'm looking for when you do your explanations. So please, every time you do one of these calculations, think about how you're going to do it. What units are you going to convert between? Make sure you have a game plan in your head before you actually start doing the math.